Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I have a first for you today uh, on this interview series and we actually uh, have a couple, husband and wife, uh, Jason and Jody Hamilton with us and how are you guys doing today? We're doing great. Good. Excellent. I actually really believe um, I should do more of these because I, you've all probably heard me say that uh, you have to have your significant other on board um, because you know real estate's going to test you and, and you don't want to have anything create internal strife. So I, I love the fact that both of you, Jason and Jody, are, are on this with me. Thank you so much. Very welcome. Glad to be here. Excellent. So why don't we just jump in like we always do and talk about what's going on in your business today. I understand you've had some closings recently. So why don't we just paint the picture of, of what your business looks like today, if you don't mind. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm a construction guy. I've had a business for some time now. That's what I've done for 21, 22 years. And, um, you know, a couple of months ago, my wife got really serious. She was all in 100%. And uh, we were 100% together. She started researching, found you. And the challenge that you presented with four in a year, um, we just took it in stride. And we, we just started hitting the ground running and uh, networking and doing different things. So, um, we just closed on two deals um, just past week, one Wednesday and one just yesterday. So we're pretty excited about it. Wow. What is today? The, the 12th and you're halfway to the goal of four. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, actually, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Three. <laughs> oh. We closed on one a little before that. So. Wow. I, th I think we have to erase your goal. <laughs> Sounds good to us. That's awesome. So I'm curious, uh, uh, Jody, when you when you, you sort of went all in in the last six months or so, what was it about real estate? What 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 sort of made sense to you? It's it's always nice for other people to hear, um, you know, what it is about real estate. Okay, well, it's kind of a blur how I ended up here, but I know that since he's a contractor with um, lack of retirement, he has a little bit from where he was in the union years ago. Mm -hmm. But you know, I started being concerned about retirement and things like that because um, he's a contractor and he does a lot of hands-on, not sure how many years he will be able to keep this up. What are we going to do for retirement? And um, we do have a small mortgage, but it's very small. So we started talking about paying off mortgage and came across Dave Ramsey. And I think somehow uh, along there, I ended up, I don't know how I got here, but I know <laughs> I, I heard you on a different um uh, channel or network, whatever. And so then I started listening to you and, um, uh, we had an appointment with the financial advisor can canceled that because we decided we weren't going to go that direction. As far as retirement and saving money, we decided we were going to go this direction. Um, so, and yeah, I can't really remember My sister was reading rich dad, poor dad at the time. She's like, you got to read this. So I started, I listened to the audio book on that and yeah, it's a blur how I, how we ended up here. But anyway, I think here we are. I yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so, so there's so much you just sort of put out there that I want to make sure other people hear. There are lots of people who have um, nice incomes, right, when they're in their prime earning year, such as a contractor. A lot of my friends in the technology sector are salespeople. These careers um, take a lot out of you, right? Obviously, hands-on with uh, being a GC and, and, and uh, yeah. you know, all of that. And, and, you know, the profession I came from, it is extremely stressful. And then there's doctors and dentists and you know, I think we just need to appreciate that, you know, there's a couple of decade window where we have the high income, but like the, you, like you both did, you, you have to, you have to look up. And, and as Jody said, you, you, you know, looked out at retirement and probably got a little scared or nervous or apprehensive, whatever words you want to use. And you're like, we better take action now. Um, so I applaud you for that. Not, I think a lot of people sort of say the words, but don't take action. So um, congratulations is the first thing I want to say. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, let's talk about all three deals. Uh, I think we should highlight, uh, and actually tell us where you are in the country. I, I, I forgot that question. We are actually in Ohio, Southern Ohio on the river. We're directly two hours south of Columbus and about two, two and a half hours east of Cincinnati. So we're right on the tri in the tri-state area. Okay. Very cool. Uh, Jody, Jason, which one do you want to tell us about deal number one? I probably ought to roll deal number one because it's a little complicated. It kind of goes against the grain typically okay. on being a landlord. Um, watching one yesterday with Anthony, I actually uh, seen where you gave the chunk money yep. and then the passer. We're kind of doing both. Um, years okay. ago, when we moved down from Columbus. We purchased a piece of property for 30000 We were going to build. I had it cleared. We let it sit for five years and we ended up buying a couple other houses. 
Um, well, we bought one, lived in it, sold it, lived in another. Um, but we ended up selling it, making a twenty-five thousand dollar profit. So um, we just recently bought a wooded lot. It's one acre. It's in a very, it's the best school district here, hmm. and that's what we're really focusing on: school districts and things like that. And uh, so we bought a piece of property. We lowballed it. They accepted. And uh, right now I got a dozer on it this minute, um, clearing it. We're going to put a road. We're just going to flip that one. Okay. Um, or, go the, ahead. the property itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a vacant lot. It's all wooded. Um, you know, everything's virgin there and we're timbering and uh, doing all that stuff right now. And we're just going to put it on the market very soon. And uh, we know minimum probably we're going to see a $10,000 $10, um, investment. I was going to say, and I think we got into this. We bought that piece of property before we decided we were going to do buy and hold. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, we we knew we wanted to do something, and that was before we started educating ourselves more with the buy and hold right. and figuring out what we were doing. But I still think that we will, you know, be able to make a profit on this. But that's yeah. why we want to get rid of that and um, go to the different direction. Yeah, because hold. closing on three deals, having twenty percent down on some of this stuff, you know, but we did pay cash for that lot. Um, yeah. Let's go to the other lot we just purchased yesterday. Okay. Okay. Um, cash for it. We have, we've been saving for some time, you know, um, so we paid cash for that. And our goal, because me being a contractor, we're building a triplex probably spring. Okay. So we're pretty excited about that one. And then the one we just closed on Wednesday, the, uh, rental property, we just went in yet. We closed Wednesday. I just went in and put a new HVAC unit in yesterday. Okay. Um, it's move in ready before, but I just didn't like the gas. They had some gas units on the, on the walls. And I didn't like that. So to make it comfortable mm -hmm. summer and winter, um, we went ahead and put a new HVAC unit. I had somebody stop by yesterday. It's someone that actually was uh, in our youth group for many, many years. He's graduated as a nurse in the ER and he says, Hey, I want to rent this from you. So we already got a renter. Yay. So we're going to first. So, very, very cool. So just so you know, in, in, in getting to four, we're not counting that first one. So you have two. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Two. But, but on that topic, um, when you come across deals, especially because you have a unique set of skills being a GC and, and as you do this more and more, um, I still find deals every now and again that I know are deals and I, can, I know I can flip or produce chunk money. So that's right. okay, right? I don't want you to think that that's not okay. If you see a deal and you can turn it in three, six months, do it. Right, because okay. you'll take that in, like you said, it'll become part of your twenty percent down on a hold. So yes, um, you know, never turn down a, a profit. I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, Makes sense? all right. Yes, sir. So I'm I'm curious about the triplex, right? Because um, I don't know that we've had anybody. Uh, I guess we've had one person talk about building a duplex. But so, w what do you envision for a triplex? Is it just a standard two bedroom, one bath, eight hundred square feet with a one car garage, or what? What's a triplex in Ohio look like? Yes, sir. That's basically it. Um, we're going to, it's a perfect lot for it and we're going to build it. And uh, right now there's some condos, not condos, excuse me, multifamilies actually in Wheelersburg area. This is probably about 10 miles away Okay. and uh, there's nothing like that in that area. So we, and it's a very, very good school district too. I mean, it's almost like a stone throw away from the high school. So nice. um, we're pretty excited about doing that. And there is yeah. a tiny airport and they've just built a bypass recently in that area. And we're hoping that this might I mean, we don't know, but potentially um, they're talking about putting some uh, things at that airport, you know, doing some different um, airline services there. So. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think school districts is often something underappreciated by landlords. Uh, so I, I applaud you for that because one of the things you'll see when you do this longer and longer is you'll get tenants with young families move in when you have a hot school district. Mm -hmm. uh, where if you're in a less than desirable area, you get a lot more singles and adults with no kids. Because if you, right. you're going to be a renter, you know, the best, you know, again, moms and dads, they think about is the best thing I give my kids in education. So they don't overtly say that, but over the years I've seen that. So, so when you have a chance, right, two lots being equal, uh, always choose the better school district in my opinion. So um, I, I'm curious, what, what are rents in Southern Ohio? So two bedroom, one bath, one car garages, we're talking what, 700 brand new or what well, no, we're thinking around 900. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then what's the timeline to build a triplex? I, I guess you have to wait till it's not frozen dirt, I guess. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. We're probably looking at, we're going to probably break around late spring. Um, and then four months, four to six months, I'd want to have it ready. Yeah. Before the next winter. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. And then you go get a construction loan and all that and 
Actually, it's, it's interesting. We're actually, we found a private investor. I just did a big project in this area and um, she's willing to, I've, I ran it by her. We're looking at another building down in the Portsmouth area and it's uh, commercial and I just built a loft apartment down there and we're getting ready to build another one right beside it or excuse me, remodel another one. It's a very hot area. It's called the Bony Fiddle area. And uh, she said that uh, she may be able to uh, help out with some of that stuff. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Again, you guys are just, you're, you're, you're acting like it's just so natural, but what you're doing is awesome because you're networking, right? You're telling people what you're doing and you never know what happens when you attract, you know, be, being positive and just putting it out there. So uh, I applaud you for that. And there's lots of, there's lots of money out there. You just, the key is not to, not to be um, overt about it, right? You can't be, because if you're, if you're scared or you're over aggressive, it just hides. But you just talk and you just you're open. It's it's wonderful. I, I I like what you guys are doing. So Michael, it's neat. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. I was going to say. So, um, you know, it's only January 12th, and you've got two on your plate. Do you have any idea of what you think is is the goal really for, or do you think, uh, given where you're at, you're going to up that goal and you're willing to declare it now in video so I can remind you in six months? <laughs> Well, I love being held accountable. Um, we are just super, just stoked. Um, goal is four rentals. Okay. okay. Buy and hold long term, and then I want to do one new build. But I'm actually going to consider that triplex the new build. Okay. Uh, I really can build a house on that lot that is being dozed right now, and but with the market, the changing market, I'm a little leery about um, building and then trying to resell and sitting on it six months or three months or a year. So we're going to kind of stay away from that, flip that property. And just so our goal to answer your questions, probably four and then one new build. Okay. However, um, not to switch gears, but we've been networking a little bit. We looked at four properties on Monday. The week prior, um, I just made a phone call. It looked like a residential home is in the hot area, the Wheelersburg area. And uh, I called the lady. It was a for sale by owner. And she says, oh, no, it's a fourplex. And I thought, okay, what do you want for it? And I am, by the way, ma'am, do you, uh, is this the only one you have? And she goes, no, I've got a six uh, plex or a six unit for sale as well. And she has multiple and is doing some research. She has multiple. So just, I think it was Tuesday, I contacted her. She was out of town, but she's supposed to get with me today. And I asked her about owner finance. And she'd be inter willing to entertain that. Um, she has a couple of sons that are lawyers. And she said, absolutely. Oh, so we, yes. I mean, we are just networking indirectly and directly. It's just amazing how many contacts we've made in the short amount of time. It, so we're, we're not scared at all, but we, one thing we want to do is make sure that everything that we're doing, because yeah. some of this, we're putting some personal cash that we say for years on. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everything, if the market, you know, crashes, there's a recession that we're able to sustain what we have. So yeah. um, your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, well, first off, um, this whole business, everything I talk about anyway, is built on being very conservative, as, as you've heard, always more down, always think about the worst case scenario, because I invested through and survived the 2008 crash, right? Hmm. Not, not, not most of the people I talk with have been investing for the last five years, which have been the best sellers market ever. And um, they're going to get stuck. They're going to be in a lot of pain because they're going to buy too much inventory. They're going to like you just like you just brought up, Jason, they're going to buy that lot, doze it, build a new house, hold it for nine months and then lose money. Right. They're not going to be cautious. Now is the time to be cautious. That said, I'm still very aggressive. I've done three transactions in the last 12 days as well. Um, right. You know, you just have to lower your numbers, right? So, for example, I don't know this deal at all. You said it's a fourplex and a sixplex? Yes. What are the gross Separate locations? Yeah, what are the gross rents? Let me just, I'm just going to play with some numbers real fast. What are, the, what are the rents on the fourplex? The fourplex is 1600 A month, right? Oh, yes. All right. And then the sixplex? Was about 3000 Okay. Yeah. So I don't know the area at all. Never seen the buildings. All those caveats, right? I've heard about this sure. for like seven seconds. Um, if I was going to do a deal like this, I would want to make my payments on the fourplex. I wouldn't want to see them over $700. Okay. Okay. Now, Why? Well, I want to keep my payments always below 50% of the rents, right? Okay. It's just, just, 
I know that if I can get it there, I can at least break even. And I have 15 years of experience proving that. Now, th- keep in mind, I have my California brain on. So I don't know Ohio's taxes. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know right. energy, right? So the numbers might be slightly different, but they're going right. to be close enough to have a discussion. And why that's important is if she came back and says she wants 1100 you just, you're done, right? It's like, what are you kidding me? Are you gonna, right. You're going to foreclose, right. right? So if I knew my maximum was 700 you know, I might go in with a, you know, play the game, right? Let, let, let's set it up where, you know, your payments are 575 and just see what happens, right? right? right. Um, and then on the sixplex, uh, it's kind of the same deal, right? I'd want my payment to be 1250 or less. I might start at 1000 And what I would probably do is give it into one seller. I would probably merge these together to get a better deal, frankly. Okay. Um, so, you know, let's see. So I, I'd probably do like 17, somewhere between 1500. I'd really like 1500. 1500 would be really good but I'd probably go up to 1700 for the right. deal. Then right. the question is, is she's comfortable with that. Then it's all about, okay, how much do you want down and how long do you want? Right. Right. Cause, and then hopefully it's less than 10%. I'd ask for 5% because it doesn't sound like she needs the money. Okay. Um, yeah. I would yeah they're start, all free and clear. They're yeah, all in free and clear. I'd give her 5%. Sure. Per, I'd offer 5%, $1,700 a month. Um, you know, I don't know what that is for 30 years. Let's just pull out the trusty calculator. One sec. This is all she in real probably, time. She probably want to do maybe a 15 year. Okay. She is probably in her 60s, I would say. Older than that. Maybe older than that. Yeah. So 1,700 times 180, which is 15 years, is $306,000. Right. And then you add in, you know, whatever your down payment is. Now that's at 0% interest, obviously, but it's always right. a starting point. Um, so I think, you know, that's where I'd want to start and then be close to that. And I think I would do owner finance deals in a down market all day long because I can go right. in and control my down payment and my payments, my monthly payments. Um, right. And then again, use that spreadsheet that we had from Bob to, so I'm yeah. sure she knows this, but again, bring it with you and say, Hey, this is why I do these deals because you're going to net a lot more cash. Yes. You're getting a lower technical interest rate, but you know, I got to hold the building forever. You don't want to foreclose on me. Right. Right. So, right. That's, you know, that's, what's interesting. What's interesting about this is, um, you know, we are learning, you know, by any stretch of imaginations. I know we've got our hands in a lot of different things um, as far as bulk, uh, passive, um, just different things or chunk money rather. Um, but I was listening to Bob, got home. It was a long day <laughs> sitting on my lazy boy. And uh, I heard the Bob, the second, you know, day one, day two. Yep. I picked up the phone immediately. My wife's like, what are you doing? I said, <laughs> I'm calling her now on the owner finance. I mean, so, you know, I appreciate what you guys do, the information you share. It is extremely beneficial and helpful. And uh, so just thank you for that. But uh, it was just neat how I just got the confidence to call and um, look at the sheet that uh, Bob put out there for everybody to see. That's so, awesome. Very, very cool. Very cool. So let's, uh, let's rewind the clock a little bit and remind everybody that you, everybody starts somewhere. So where does this real estate story start for you? You know, did, did, did is your family all connected and you, your, fa- your father's father was a GC and like real estate's in your blood or what's the story? <laughs> well, you know, I grew up with not a lot of money and I remember when I was 13 building decks in a trailer park. And uh, wow. so long story short, I met my wife. Her dad was a uh, union guy. And so I got in for the insurance and retirement, different things like that. I spent 13 and a half years running some big job sites, a lot of hospitals and um, high rises, things like that. And then I moved two hours south from Columbus and I started Crossroads Construction, my business. And um, it's kind of took off from there. And uh, you want to add anything to that? Um, no. My mind's going a bunch of different places. But <laughs> <laughs> why, don't we, um, why, yeah, why don't we give it to, to Jody to talk a little bit? What, what, what does this real estate thing mean to you? Or how did it start and all, all that, if you don't mind? Well, I know I, I've always had, I've always wanted to travel. So I'm hoping that, you know, this will add some extra, you know, income. Because, you know, you feel like... You can't do that a lot. You know, he's always working. He's been, he is so busy. Um, he's good at what he does and his phone rings off the hook. And um, anyway, I think I'm getting sidetracked to what we were talking about, but you know, <laughs> where it started. Yeah. So um, just trying to make him slow down. And I'm hoping, I think at first this is going to be, we're going to be very busy yeah. um, trying to get this started. But I think in the end he will slow down because um, oh, he's very busy with his construction business. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, I Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
That's okay. I was going to say, I think, I think what you're going to find, and I can already see your future. I mean, I have been doing this long enough to, that I can sort of predict with some level of certainty your future. You're, you're going to be in this in, in wildly successful. Uh, you're, you're going to be winding down or partnering or whatever it is with someone else in the GC business to, to maybe you sell it. I don't know what GCs do when they get ready to get out, but you know, in five to eight years, you're going to have a rental portfolio of cash flow assets. They're going to cover all your expenses. So, so know that that's in your future if you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, so congratulations. Um, I do want to say something that Jody put out there that I didn't appreciate. And I actually just added it in the book that I'm, I'm uh, going to be releasing soon is you have to celebrate the small victories. Um, so I'm going to ask or at least suggest the following to you. So either when you hit your fourth rental or maybe when let's just put it out there, if you get these 10 units owner financed, I want you to take a weekend or do something that's not normal, right? If you go out to date night and all of that already, I want you to do something extra um, because that's not something we did, right? For 15 years, we sacrificed forever and we just kept looking up at this, this mountaintop. And um, yeah, we got there, but it wasn't a lot of fun. We could have, we could, it didn't have to, we don't, I'm not talking about going to Hawaii or the Caribbeans or something extravagant that's thousands of dollars. I'm talking hundreds right. of dollars. Go somewhere, buy a nice bottle of wine or champagne, whatever it is for you, go right. do that. Make that a touchstone, photograph it and remember, and that will make you come back and go after the next goal, right? Let's go find 20 more owner financed or let's go do, let's go from four to 10. So hopefully when this is over, over breakfast or coffee or whatever you want to do, have that discussion. And I want to know that you've done it when you hit your goal, right? Don't do it early, but, but do something like that because you have to reward yourself. You're on a journey that is going to take commitment and work and late nights and your phone rings off the hooks, but break away every now and then is my strong suggestion. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. We know which one of you two that's for. <laughs> well, and I tell you, I give all the credit to her, Michael. I do. She, uh, once she said she was all in, this is something I would like to do again, not directly, but something that I've always kind of dreamed of. And you know, I'm not going to, well, I'm going to share our ages. Um, if that's okay. She's 42. I'll be, I'm 41. We're both going to be a year older here in another month in February. Our birthdays happen, but we actually have a pretty, um, I don't know what word to use, but our goal is actually by the time we're 45 or I'm 45, not her. Yeah. Um, to, uh, we joke around, but uh, yeah. to be, she likes uh, younger men, huh? <laughs> yes. So uh, well, our goal is when I'm 45, I would like to uh, yeah. be financially free. And, I, uh, yeah, I think, I think there's, you know, I don't know what your monthly goal is, but I, I, I don't think there's any reason you can't be there just with what I've seen you do in the first month or so of, of, of doing this. Um, you should get there and, and, and I can only imagine where you'll be when you're 50. Um, yeah. Because it, it, you'll see this thing. It, you're already sort of on the second step of this. It, it, will, it will just take off. It's like exponential. That's the word I was looking for. It's exponential. Um, yes. So it's going to be a lot of fun, but, but you, you, Jason need to be careful that, um, because you're like me, right? It's just, we just go, 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 go. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, that adds stress to the relationship that I didn't appreciate, uh, for the longest time. And it's only upon reflection. I'm like, you freaking idiot. Why didn't you just take, you know, one week in a year and, you know, go be happy. Right. So, right. To learn from my mistake. So, um, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's always embarrassing admitting when you're wrong, but I was wrong. <laughs> so um, let, let's uh, let's fast forward now. So let's let's just uh, congratulations. You're both 45 now. Uh, what what does that look like for you? Did you? I don't know. Do GC sell their business? Right? Is that an asset that you could sell, or do you just kind of stop? Or how does that work? I guess what does 45 look like? I guess I don't know. Um. Well. Our goal is when we're 45. I'm only 41. She's 42. Okay, yeah. When you're 40. When I'm 45, I'm, she's on it. I'm not. Um, but when I'm for, uh, typically, the way a GC works, I've actually started this business um, with no business loan. Um, yep. years ago, and it is, I guess, okay. I mean, I, I do all right. I have some employees and different things. And I, I do no advertising and marketing, believe it or not, because I'm, I'm so busy now. I've turned away, you know, a couple million dollars of work here in the last um, probably six months and bigger projects. And I do a lot of residential, some small commercial, but to say that there's a lot of contractors in the area. Okay. Um, there's a, just a handful of good contractors in the area. So a lot of my business comes from word of mouth. Okay. Um, I guess you could probably sell um, crossroads construction, the business. Right. Um, but oftentimes there's so many 
Uh, to answer your question, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. So, so uh, let's assume that's zero. Let's assume I didn't know, right? I, I have no idea. Okay, sure. So let's assume that's zero. So, okay, you, you you celebrate your 45th birthday. You go, I'm done, right? You let the, you know, I guess the, maybe an employee takes over. I don't know, but whatever. Sure. That, that crossroad constructions is done. Now, what do you do for a living? What's what's going on? Keep investing. Okay. <laughs> I like that answer. So I do plan on keeping Crossroads Construction active. Okay. Um, Just not your stuff? Not play the role that I'm playing right now. Oh, I mean, now I got it. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Um, so until I get to a certain level of uh, that passive income yeah. and where we can be financially free and not rely on my full-time job right now. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right, Jody, what, is it, what does it look like for you? So you're 45. Are you running a a portfolio of 50 rental properties and you have, you know, properties all over Ohio or what does it look like for you? Well, that, I know we have looked a little North close to the bigger cities, Columbus and um, probably more Columbus than Cincinnati, but you know, I don't know. We would like to learn more about that. We want to, you know, as, but, you oh, well. that, so. but um, you know, just see what, you know, we can get into up that direction, but definitely stay here for right now. Yeah. And um, I, I work at the schools, um, so I have summers off. So I imagine, I mean, I might continue continue to work. I don't have really long days at, you know, school. So I would like to definitely travel more in the summer. Okay. And um, I keep our insurance, which, you know, maybe it might not even be a problem in the future that I need to work for our insurance. But um, yeah, I hope that he he's able to do a lot more of the uh, property managing type part. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm yeah. hoping we'll, we'll be able to hire somebody to do that. I don't know. You know, we're not, we're definitely not there yet, but yeah, well, no, this is, this is, this is what you think about. You so, you need to sort of paint the vision of, of what the future is. So yeah, I would put it out there. Yeah. You're going to have an employee. Maybe it's under the, the construction business. I don't know how you work that out. Talk to accountants and lawyers, but whatever. Uh, that is the property manager. Cause you're probably going to have 40 units or more by then. Um, so it makes total sense. You have the GC experience so you can do your repairs and all of that. And, and that makes a total sense to me. The other thing I want to want to put out there is um, a lot of people like to invest in big cities. You said Columbus, Cincinnati, you know, for examples. Mm -hmm. um, and you're two hours away, if I remember right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I would tell you that there's nothing wrong being in a tertiary market, right? Being a big fish in a small pond can be wildly profitable. Being someone who's in a tertiary market trying to invest where, um, you know, potentially hedge funds or, you know, big guys are coming in is um, not as sexy as you think it would be. It's certainly a lot less profitable uh, mm -hmm. and it's easier to make mistakes because you feel like you're under pressure and all of that. So I, I definitely think you should check it out because you just never know. Um, but don't think, I guess what I'm saying is don't think you have to do that. Um, yeah. And certainly stay where you are for the next two years anyway. Um, uh -huh. Right. Learn the market. How big is the market? Right. How many? What's the population like? Inside of county, what was it? Seventy six thousand. Yeah. Okay. Inside of county. Oh. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I was just trying to figure where you, you are. Yeah. yeah. The county so, side of county is about seventy six thousand. Okay. All right. So that's, you know, I, I rounded up to a hundred thousand. That's that's a decent size. Okay. All right. Um, this is good. So do you? So again, you see your goals being the same. Adding rentals and doing new construction every year. Jason, is that sort of one a year or do you think you're going to ramp that up or what does that look like? I would love with the marriage with Crossroads Construction, maybe in the first short term, there's an empty lot right beside the one we just bought yesterday that we're building the triplex. I've already made the phone call to her and um, she ripped my face off, but yeah. you know, here, here's the way, I, what are you doing over there? No, I'm not selling my lot, but here's the thing. She's 78 years old. Oh. Um, she hasn't done something with it. And so I'm looking to build another triplex right beside and have a whole corner block right there in, in Minford, another little uh, town there. So uh, that's my goal is to keep, I want to be careful doing that, but if I can find the right property yeah. uh, for cheap, you know, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, all you can do is make an offer, you know? Amen. Just keep that attitude. The worst thing she could do is rip your face off. And that's a big fat. Yep. Doesn't matter. And, and again, I smile. My wife's like, wow, what is she doing? And I said, she'll come around. She'll call me in a month after I start building or whenever I start building and say, Hey, you still interested in my property? And I'd be like, let's roll. So yeah, exactly. And who cares? I mean, even if it's, even if it's 15 years from now and you know, it, whatever happens happens to her, right. Which happens to all of us, right. Her heirs, sure. I'm sure will want to get rid of it. It's very rare. Sure. Uh, that an heir of a property owner wants to do it, right? Because I just, mm. the two of the deals that I just did, 
were from a son whose father unfortunately passed away. He was in his 90s, so he lived a great life, wow. or a long life. I don't know if it was great, but sure. I, assume, I assume it was. Um, he's on the East Coast, hasn't been back to Fresno in 40 years. He's like, I want out. I'm like, well, good news. I'll, I'll take him off your hands. So yeah, it happens. So this is, this is the part of the show where I turn it over to you. So you can share whatever you'd like, words of wisdom, uh, sites you like. Um, if you're looking for anything, maybe t talk about Crossroads Construction because people in Ohio might be watching this. So advertise your company. Um, say whatever you'd like. So Jody no, first, maybe? Um, yes, sir. I, the only thing I have to say is maybe just uh, keep pressing forward because uh, Jason, I was at work, but he went and took care of getting a loan for uh, buy and hold. And um, first two banks turned him down, both of which we did business with. So he just said, well, I will just take my business elsewhere. And uh, third bank um, has given us a loan. So I'm going to place on that. I like it. And just get started. Listen, it's, it's not something that you've got to, I mean, we did save for some time. We don't have a lot of debt. We're thankful for, but you know, you got to live below your means. That's the important thing. I know you preach that, Michael. Yes. You got to live below your means. Um, get out of this mindset of what you make is what you spend and put back. I've got a niece in New York. She just moved up there a year ago and she, she has a goal for this year. And by the way, she's going to be a real estate investor and my nephew is also going to be. And thanks to you. And um, so she's already putting back $500 a month. She goes, I'm living below my means and I'm going to get started and I'm going to start putting starting now. So I think that's the big thing and just take action. Yeah. Um, set my goals. You know, I want to retire in three years, really. I mean, who's going to be able to do that or be financially free, excuse me, but yeah. listen, you've got to set some goals and you got to, you got to go. And uh, I tell you, if you just keep pressing forward, good things happen. You're going to find people that are getting rid of a sixplex and a fourplex and you're going to con find this lot, the house, you know, it's an empty lot now and um, you're going to be able to build a triplex. You just got to get out there and network and uh, you know, they'll come in directly and sometimes you got to be uh, aggressive about it and go out there and just uh, be active. That's, that, that, that's, that's such a wonderful thing. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't applaud you and helping your niece and nephew live below their means. I call it playing good defense. It's um, it is so rare, right? We, and frankly, I was raised that way, right? I, I, I can still hear my mother saying when I went to grade school every single day. Now, Michael, your job is to go to school, get a good education, so you get a good job, yeah. so you can buy lots of nice stuff. I mean, I heard that every day. It's like tattooed on my right. And I spent my 20s being stupid, right? <laughs> made made yeah. decent money in my 20s, and I spent it all. I mean, it was just dumb. So right. I applaud you for helping your niece and nephew. I, you guys are going to do some great things. I want to thank you for being on the show. And uh, please stay in touch and let me know how it goes. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you.